Uh, hello, welcome to West Wales Women Girls League Unlocked, a new show focusing on all things about the West Wales Women and Girls League. Uh, for our first show, we'll be doing our first interview of a series, speaking to former players of the West Wales Women and Girls League who've gone on to have success in the game. Uh, we're delighted to welcome our first guest today, Swansea City Ladies, Katie Hosford. Welcome, Katie. Thank you, welcome. Um, so, yeah, just uh, many of our young players will know you as uh, Swan star Katie Hosford, but uh, you started out in the West Wales Girls League, um, just like a lot of the good, well, all the girls playing in our league. What's the earliest memory of uh, playing in the league, and can you tell us about how you started and what, what was it like playing when you first started as well? Um, well, I think I first joined the team when I was about 12 years old, which was Pontedowie Town. Um, really new to the game, always played with boys beforehand, just in the street, in school and things like that. So joining my first team was, you know, really daunting, but got really we uh, welcomed in, loved it. Um, used to play on, the su on every Sunday. There's a lot of tournaments as well back then in the league. So I used to play, you know, like around Robin with a couple of teams on the day. So, yeah, that was really good. First, that was my first team. Uh, I stayed at Pontedowie for about a year and then moved on to Rose, which was just up the road. just suited me better, really, and absolutely loved it. Stayed there then until I was about 14 years old. So I was with them for three years, made lots of good friends, lots of memories. And then for my final year, I joined Kimla. And at Kimla, we won the, cup, the League Cup. We won the league and we won, no, we didn't, we came, got to the semi-finals of the Welsh Cup. So those are probably the highlights of, of myself in the West Wales Girls League. Um, you know, winning it with my, with my friends and getting the opportunity to play in big matches at a young age was you know, really beneficial to me and moving on then to senior football. But yeah, those are probably my, my earliest memories. Great stuff. Uh, so yeah, the, the numbers of girls playing football is growing year on year and uh, it's obviously great to see. Um, you also, you know, you do a bit of coaching yourself. Um, have you seen that increase in numbers and, and seen the quality improving firsthand? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, when I played in the West Wales Girls League, we'd struggle to make uh, a squad of 11. I, I mean, sometimes we play with uh, eight players, the other team would have a full squad and we really did struggle for numbers quite often. So to see the teams now, the amount of teams to start is probably double the teams of when I was playing in the league. So it's obviously a stronger league, more players. And I think the, t the strength of the squad as well, you've got so many good players, talented players distributed around lots of different teams. So obviously each team is going to be strong in its own way and a lot more players now in terms of when I'm coaching. I mean, we hold trials every year for the Girls Academy and we try to keep a maximum of 20 players per squad and we have four age groups and I mean it was really really difficult to get pick those 20 players you know there's so many talented girls who are on the fringes and just missing out based on the fact that we can only really have 20 players per squad so you know the fact that they have to challenge themselves to get in that 20 and that there's so many players competing for that I mean I think with one age group there was about 40 50 trialists and you know back Probably when I was that age, you, you know, you, there was no one near that figure. So, yeah, definitely growing now. And, I mean, there's lots more opportunities for them as well. You know, they can join club teams. There's no pressure. They can just go and enjoy with their friends. There's more teams around for them to be able to do that. And I think, you know, like uh, the huddle groups that the FAW putting on, I mean, they are vital, really, for getting younger girls involved. You know, they find it a bit daunting at first, but it's lots of fun and games. So, yeah, definitely now the numbers have increased massively. Yeah, definitely. So, and obviously you told us earlier a little bit about your sort of, um, the teams you played for then. So, could you just tell us a bit about your, your journey, I guess, from, uh, you know, young player and to, uh, to Welsh, Premier, uh, Welsh Premier Women's League winner and playing the Champions League and things like that? So yeah, definitely. When I, um, I started out, obviously, like everybody else, playing for their local club team, playing with the boys, probably, wherever you can get a football, that's what I was doing. You'd always see me around the village with a football and... I challenged myself, I moved to Kimla when I was younger because I thought that was the best move for me to try and win win some trophies and get developed really and then I got into the Swans Development Centre which we run now. Um, I was a player there from under 12s up to under 16s and it was from there really that I found a pathway into the senior team 
Ian was obviously my coach for the under 16s there and he asked me to go along to training and it worked quite well, well really because my birthday's in August and the new season started in September so I was able to sign for um, that season and it was tough to begin with going from uh, junior football up to senior football obviously there's lots of challenges the cardi being the main one um, but after a couple of months, you know, I really found my feet. The girls were brilliant with me in training, and the older ones with lots of experience at working us in. And I like to think that now, class is probably the older ones in the squad, that we were able to do that for the new ones coming through too. And, you know, that really did help me. I grew in confidence and cemented my uh, place in the team, really. And I wasn't prepared to give it up, and I kept training, kept playing. And then we managed to win the league, I think it was about three years ago. And we were able to go to Champions League, which is a massive experience. You know, you never think when you're younger that you'll get the chance to go and play abroad against some of the top clubs, and we were able to do that. So that's probably one of the, the highlights so far in, in my career is going out and competing in Champions League. Despite, you know, not getting brilliant results, it was having the experience and being able to grow from that. So, yeah, that's probably one of the key moments. And then we've won, well, since I've been at Swans, we've won two Welsh Cups, one League Cup, and we just won the league again this year. So we'll be getting the opportunity to go on Champions League in October, which everyone's really excited for and, you know, preparing already, really. And it's just, yeah, the, the things that come with it really are a massive bonus. And yeah, I just love playing for Swans. And yeah, I guess that's one of the things, isn't it? The football, a lot of people, uh, obviously there's the actual game itself, but just it, football offers so much more. And I think it's a lot of things, one of the things as a, as a league, and I'm sure yourselves at, at the Swans as well, is, Pushing that, um, that this is the all-round experience of what sport brings, isn't it? It's, and it's just there's so many uh, opportunities that come from it that that can be beneficial just by playing a team sport. Yeah, definitely. I mean, your teammates are your best friends, really. They say you know you're around them, and you get banter all the time. The changing rooms full of banter, but it's not just that. It's it's having that unity as well, you know, we get on the pitch and any issues, any problems are always pushed aside and we know that we've got to get the job done. I mean, one game to win the league three years ago it was Cardiff away and we were losing 3-1 at one point and we knew that if we won that game, you know, we'd, we'd win the league. So we knew we all came together, we pushed and wanted it for each other and it shows a lot about, the, you know, our squad and we came away with a 4-3 win in that game. So... It's just, you know, we, we're growing every year. Everyone who comes in new to the squad, we like to make them feel welcome, you know. No one, we're all equal in the squad. The whole, however many there are, not just the 11 that play. So, yeah, we are really close. And I think this lockdown has been quite difficult for all of us because we're so used to being around each other, you know, three, four times a week, going, going out, you know, just spending time with each other. So, yeah, it, it, it is difficult. But I'm sure when we get the chance to meet up again and train that, It'll, uh, it'll be a good little reunion. Yeah, obviously you mentioned lockdown there. How, how's, um, how have you been finding lockdown with regards to being keeping training or any tips for our young girls what they can do during lockdown? Um, lockdown, well, it's been difficult, to be fair. You know, the season got finished in March, so we were a bit un, un, we didn't know what was going on, if it was going to finish. But, you know, thankfully we got given the league with two league games to go, so that was excellent. I mean... We did have a bit of time off, I think, you know, a couple of weeks just to recharge, you know, as you would in any normal year anyway, just to have some time off. But yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, just going out with the football, kicking against the wall, just practicing both feet. You know, that's what I always used to do. Um, lucky now that I get the chance to go and obviously do that with my team. But, you know, you're not sure on the way the grass foot is going at the minute. So definitely just going out with, get your parents out, get your brother or sister with you, just just using the ball really. And if they can, go for a run, go to the field, just try and keep fit. It is hard to motivate yourself, you know, when you don't know what's going on, you don't know when the league is going to start. But the way it's going, it could just start in two, three weeks' time. So you need to be prepared and ready for that to happen. So, yeah, to, to all the girls who are waiting for some announcement or a little bit of advice of when they can go back to training, I just... I would just recommend going out with the football, just getting the touch and keep trying to uh, keep fit, really, ready for when it does start back so you can be your best when, when you've got to play. Well, definitely. It's uh, good advice and hopefully the girls will uh, take <laughs> pick up on some of that. Uh, but one thing we've definitely been seeing as a, a league and coaches and things is there's a lot of creative ways that people are doing things through uh, lockdown. Um, a lot of those Zoom sessions, quizzes, things like that. One of the things that we've definitely seen is has been... Uh, 
very popular is uh, the emergence of the, I know they were doing it before, but uh, TikTok. Have you uh, been partial to a few TikTok dancers doing? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I haven't downloaded TikTok. Um, probably because I'm afraid I'll get addicted to it because I know lots of people who spend hours on TikTok. I've seen a couple of the girls, you know, they've done some TikTok videos, but no one. To me, when I'm coaching, that's all the girls talk about is TikTok. So I'm not getting involved in it. They can uh, carry on with their TikTok dances and then surprise me when we get back to coaching. I'm looking forward to uh, the array of uh, celebrations after this now with all these these dances, I reckon. <laughs> when, when right. we, yeah, we will. We, um, I set some of the girls with the younger age groups a little challenge one week to come out, come up with some celebrations and they did bring out a TikTok dance in that and on the bus and away journeys is only at the end of it. So yeah, <laughs> they're definitely TikTok fanatics. <laughs> It's all good fun. Um, but yeah, going back to yourself, um, one of the things, uh, one of the questions we were asked, we asked um, people in the league to send in some questions, and one of them was um, just sort of who's, who's the sort of best player you've played with and against? Ooh, on the spot. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Rachel Rowe. Um, she is currently full time professional for Reading, Welsh International, and when I first joined, for, joined Swans, she was there. Um, playing in midfield and she's absolutely unreal I mean the, the work rate and motivation and mindset everything that a footballer should should look up to really and you know in training you wouldn't want to be against her you always be glad when you see her in the same colour bib as you so yeah probably definitely Rachel Rowe um, really really talented footballer and I'm sure a lot of the girls in the West Wales Girls League would will know Rachel for you know representing Wales and what she's gone on from really because um she started off like all of us, playing in the league and getting, well, some good games then and getting into the Swans and then pushing on and getting a full-time contract. So, yeah, she, she's definitely probably the best player I've uh, played with and, well, I could say against in training, but I'll have to play against her on the weekend. Brilliant. Um, so, one of the other questions then was, um, what advice would you give to any of the girls who want to obviously go on and you know take football on as a bit more of a, a serious a career or if, if not full time but just sort of you know a bit more serious in the you know um in the Welsh Welsh Prem and that kind of thing as well um first of all like everybody says is not to give up and just keep trying keep working hard um and I think one of the most important things is to make sure you you you're happy and to go outside of your comfort zone because if you keep in your comfort zone and you just plod along and you'll stay maybe in a team where it's not where you want to be and you want to go and challenge, you want to better yourself. It's being able to do that and step out of your comfort zone, really. I mean, I had done it when I first signed for Swans. It was really challenging the first couple of months. You know, I, I was on the bench, I was in the reserve team and a couple of my friends, my really good friends were in, in the first team. So it was really hard, um, but I stuck at it and I kept going. And I think that's one of the most important things is that you keep going and you keep pushing yourself. I mean, you, you will have people saying, oh, just stay where you are, or, you know, just, just keep playing football, you know, you're just doing it to, to enjoy something. But if you really want to make something of it, you've got to push yourself and, you know, don't settle for just what you've got. Keep trying. I know a lot of the time you might want to stay in a team where your friends are as well. I know that can be something that keeps you there. And, that, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. And you, you're happy to just play football on the weekend with your friends. That's, that's fine. But if you, if you want to go and push yourself, don't be afraid to do that. And don't, don't worry really what other people think. I think that's the most important thing. Oh, great advice, sir. Um, so that's pretty much uh, where we've come to. But before we finish, um, the, uh, the the toilet roll keep you up, be challenged. Was doing the rounds at the uh, at the start of lockdown as well. Did you uh, do you partake? And uh, I'm just wondering, you may not have one to hand now, but uh, would you be willing to do uh, a little demo and maybe send it in and we can edit it into the end of the video? <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. I do that. I did. I think yeah, we done one really early on in the lockdown, and it's actually harder than it looks. You know, I, the first couple of attempts, I had it was halfway across the living room. So yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go, and I can send it in. That's fine. There we are. Great. We're gonna try and keep a leaderboard. So uh, best challenge, or make sure you get your best attempt. Oh, in. It's competitive. It's competitive. It'll be be more competitive than the league now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that's, um, thanks, Katie. Thank you very much for uh, taking time out to uh, have a chat to me. Um, uh, it's obviously great speaking to someone who's doing so well, um, especially someone who started in the West Wales Girls League. And hopefully, um, the the young players watching this will, you know, see it's uh, it'll be a bit of an inspiration for them to uh, 
crack on and uh, hopefully we'll see a lot more girls from the league progressing into uh, better things. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks again, Katie. Bye. Bye. Look after yourselves and keep active.